behind the wall! 24 hours at Chillingham Castle scared us. Will it scare you? Welcome to Most Haunted. We've come to Northumberland to try and uncover the mystery of Chillingham Castle. Now, over the years, it's made a name for itself as being one of the most haunted places in Great Britain. It's been called the home of the torturers, and one priest has described it as an embodiment of evil. So, is Chillingham Castle haunted? Does it live up to its reputation? Or is it just an old drafty castle with creaky windows well, that's what the Most Haunted team are here to find out. Chillingham was built in the 12th century in the middle of the beautiful Northumberland countryside. It was once one of the most important and senior strongholds of this region. Bloody battles between the English and Scottish were fought in the surrounding fields. Chillingham was used as a shelter for English soldiers and a prison for Scottish rebels. Over the years, this castle has housed many people, each with a story to tell. Perhaps these people are the ghosts of Chillingham. Most Haunted want to try and uncover the truth behind the supposed hauntings here. Now, to do that, we're going to spend the night, 24 hours to be exact. What we want to try and do is try to capture any paranormal activity on film and to uncover the truth behind the ghosts that are said to walk here. Now, let me introduce you to our crew. We've got Mark on steady cam. Hi, Mark. Hi. You all right? Yeah. And then we've got just peeking behind there. Say hi, Martin. Hello. He's on sound. And then we've got our lovely... Oh, lovely producer, Carl, turn around and say hello to hello. me. Ian, one of our cameramen, hi. Rick, one of our cameramen, are you scared hi. tonight? Uh, somewhat, yeah, but nervous. <laughs> Where's our director, Bev? What are you expecting to happen tonight? Uh, who knows, I'm a big girl, what's the worst that can happen? Absolutely. Marcel, our makeup lady, <laughs> you scared? Um, I'm an open-minded sceptic. Good, and of course, Max, he keeps us nice and warm with tea and coffee and food. I do. Are you scared? <laughs> um, no, not really. <laughs> Famous last word. <laughs> We've also enlisted the help of a parapsychologist, Jason Carr. Now, Jason, what exactly is a parapsychologist? Well, a parapsychologist is somebody who studies unusual phenomena, things like ghosts, haunted houses, but also includes other things such as mediums and psychics as well. So, Jason, as a parapsychologist, do you believe in ghosts? I believe that certain things happen that we can't explain, whether or not they are down to ghosts or some other unexplainable phenomenon that science can't currently understand is down to a person's personal beliefs. Um, but certainly I have monitored areas where ghosts have been reported which do show unusual fluctuations on our equipment, so something is happening. Now, talking of equipment, you've bought some bits and pieces here. Just very quickly tell us what you've got. Well, tonight, one of the things that we're going to use, and we have used before in the past here, um, is an infrared zero lux camera. Basically, this looks in the dark and it sees things that the human eye can't see, so when it's pitch black to us, this camera can see. Mm -hmm. And we have caught anomalies, things that perhaps can't be explained uh, on that in the past. One of the other things that I'll be using is um, basically a non-contact laser thermometer. And what this does, it fires a laser beam, and between the thermometer itself and a hard surface that the beam is reacting to, it measures the in-between uh, temperature. So if there is something perhaps invisible to the human eye, which is affecting the temperature, as a lot of reported ghosts are supposed to do, this will tell us, and we can then corroborate that by taking photographs which perhaps will, will corroborate the evidence again and show something up that we can't see. Okay. Um, we're also going to use electromagnetic field sensors. Now everything in the world, you, me, the floor, the steps, everything around us has an electromagnetic field and this basically can measure that field. Now fluctuations do not occur in the electromagnetic field naturally unless they're due to electric cables or they're due to equipment of some kind functioning. Now if an electromagnetic energy fluctuation occurs this will tell us and if we can't explain it then it's something 
for want of a better word, paranormal, because we can't explain it at the moment. And there is a lot of theories which suggest that electromagnetic field fluctuations are associated with ghosts. Right, OK. Now, there's one last member of our crew to arrive. Derek Akora is a man who claims he can talk to the dead. Now, he has no knowledge of our location or its history, and at present he's been driven round the countryside until we are ready for his arrival. Sir Humphrey Wakefield and his family have owned and lived in Chillingham Castle for years. He was kind enough to show us round. Oh, Sir Humphrey, this is a beautiful room. What's it called? Minstrel's Hall. Really? Very much part of castle life. Is it haunted? I've heard that it's haunted. I mean, the whole castle is wonderfully haunted, and we're very happy with, with it, and they're happy with us. So you're not at all bothered by the ghosts, no, supposed not... ghosts that are here? Um, they're not supposed, they're all for real, and they're uh, very much part of our life, and we're part of their life, and that makes us very happy. I mean, what, what sort of um, year does the castle date back to? Date back to the 1100s, just Gosh. after the conquest. And ever since the 1200s, the same family have more or less been living here. And so the ghosts will know who we are and we, we know who they are. And it all works very well. And this Briggy. Briggy. Hello, sweetheart. Now, does, does, does Briggy feel anything? Mm. Briggy certainly does, yes. What, what sort of things does he do? He, he, I don't know. He either wags his tail and goes up and looks very friendly, or else he might growl and look into a corner. Really? But he, you know, he, he sees things that we don't see and he's very happy with them. Right, OK, then. Shall we, do you want to tell me more about the history? Is it, you, I think we can go up the stairs here, can't Wonderful. we? I'm trying to get my bearings right. You'll get them in time. OK. Come and stay for a few years. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> so this is the chapel we have here, as you can see. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is lovely. Have there been any hauntings in this particular room? I think, curiously, in the whole castle, this is the one place where there haven't been any hauntings. I think chapels, in a way, um, are left very much in peace. There's a great feeling of peace in this place, and I think sort of nothing happens here. I think everything's at rest here. Didn't you find some skeletons here? Yes, there were some skeletons found there, and the sort of experts all thought that there should therefore be a particular turbulence. But I don't think so. I think they sort of had holy burial. Did they ever find therefore... out who the skeletons were? No, they didn't. They never did. Shall we uh, carry on? Do you want to lead the way? Right. Very good. Wonderful. I'll follow you. Oh, it's freezing. So, Sir Humphrey, these are holiday apartments as well, aren't they? These are private rooms, but there are holiday apartments in the castle. Certainly. But, but why would anybody want to come and have a holiday here? And they've got the wonderful bonus. If they're interested in um, hauntings, they can come to our haunted apartments. If they're interested in not hauntings, they can go to our wing, which has no spiritual Anything presence there. at all. I've heard of the blue boy. Now, am I right in saying this, that he was supposed to be buried alive in, in the walls? In this place here, there's a passageway through the wall there to what we call the pink room. When my visitors come here, they often say there's a, there's, must, I, there must be an electric fault. They say they see a blue flash. All I know is that they saw the radiant form and the, ch the child, was, child bones were discovered in that wall. And I know of no other horrors. After hours of being driven round the countryside, Derek Akora, our spiritual medium, had finally arrived. Great. Jenny, all right? Yes. With our team now assembled at Chillingham Castle, we started showing Derek around. Before we had time to switch on the cameras, he saw an apparition in the form of a woman. Immediately, Rick, our cameraman, began to feel faint. You're so very solemn, and this happens to you. Are you all right? What happened? Just all that. You know, all on your head. We used to feel on that, and then it just, it just went dead. It's like, oh. I thought you were going to faint. Oh. All right. So it just went a bit dizzy, and, um... Right. It was all that. Yeah, OK. Oh, yeah. yeah, no problems. You're going to be all right. No problems. What would that have been, 
Um, was, where was he at the time? Here, just here. Here. Okay, and if I was, was here. Okay, it, all this is is um, what we call the essence of the lady that was showing herself before. Did you feel any sense going across your legs at all? Yeah, it's still now. Yeah, she's here. Okay. Step back, sweetie. Step back. Step back. Come on, you're affecting him too much. Bless you. Step back. She's eager. Well, that's great. Oh, yeah. sweet. Do you want to take five minutes <sighs> out? <sighs> Why would she have done that to, to Rick? Is it because he's sensitive? Yes, to... yes. She's just come in, come close to him, and what he's done is movement is actually interacted and they, they come into the same, um, the orb of his aura. So it's affected him that way. If he just has a couple of little um, drinks of water and um, even if, Rick, take, go out of this area just for a minute. Go out of this area and you'll get your focus back. Do you want to get this thing off then? Yeah. You'll get your focus. I don't know how it's going to you. Oh, God, no idea. Go and have a rest. Not a rest, my fag. <laughs> it's going to be okay, this honestly. Where, yeah. This was where you told me earlier, off camera, yes. that you said the lady, here. yeah, when we were down in... in Her name's Mary, Mary and she's so, so eager. And it's enthusiasm. Um, but, um, you see, how can I put this? She's not against men, but I get the inclination because she's backed off, she's not speaking to me. But I've just asked my, my guide, Sam. She's a, how can I put it? He looked a little bit like someone that, um, how can I put this? Give it to me clearly, Sam. Get it clearly for me, please. She was disappointed because he looked a little bit like her husband in his younger years. And it's like she's looking for him and it's, oh, and she comes to his legs and realises, what have you. So facially, he looks a little bit like. And what, what's a this lady's figure? name? Mary. Mary. Mary that's what Jason, can you confirm that? Can you well, confirm that? Don't tell me it's, anymore. It's early stages, but there is uh, there is a spirit connected with Chilean Castle whose first name is Mary. There okay. is, okay. and she is one of the stronger, almost reported right. spirits, if okay. you like. Um, okay. She's disappointed. She's very, very disappointed. In other words, when a person's like broken hearted, yeah. and she's walking around so broken hearted, <laughs> and she feels so let down, and she talks about her daughter. Thank you, Sam. Talks about her daughter who was also let down. Um, and she was disappointed with me. Let, let down why? She doesn't believe her husband could do that to her. What, what Sam? OK, she waited for him for a long time. And he was, um... Was he? He was off with another lady. Oh. And she sat for hours and hours. And she sat and she waited. And she waited on her daughter. Very, very lonely. Very, very lonely. And they cried tears together. And the tears are still here. And the tears are upsetting. They enveloped me. And she's so sad. So sad. Why is he doing this? She still thinks, bless her, that he's going to come back. He can't, my dear. That's very interesting because the story connected with the ghost of Mary, I haven't said the surname yet, is believed to haunt the castle because she's searching for her errant husband who went off with Mary's sister, Lady Henrietta. Oh. He went off with her and left the castle and left her alone here with her daughter in the castle alone. She's going to try, bless her, to actually show herself and not just go on the, what we call the psych sensations. So, um, she's, Sam said she's prepared, um, uh, she seems to be in her own way interested and she wants to get the story, she wants to get the true story herself. Right. She still to this present day doesn't know what happened. Mm. Mm. So she can get the story, who? Who? Okay. She caught the two men talking, and one was a husband, and one was who worked around him. 
Can you give me more later? Can you give me more, please? Can you find out more for me, Sam? Like, thank you. Is she going to keep hounding Rick, then? No, no. We've asked her very, very kindly to leave his um, area. Leave him alone. Because he just went... He just stood yes. here and he just went, oh, my God. And yes. he glazed over. Yes. His eyes went bloodshot. Yes. And he started swaying from side to side like that yes. and went, help me. Yes, and this is exactly what can happen, Avert. Right, OK. And it hits the legs. This is why I asked him. Did it start around the legs? Yes. And he said yes. Okay. And it just rushed up like this. Now, OK, sometimes, in a, like the lovely lady, a very sorrowful lady, yeah. so we got to be a little bit um, Finis, sympathetic yeah, to, uh, to find out why she's, you know, totally she's so sorrowful. And also maybe to help her, maybe for the first time, into understanding that basically, hey, she is not in the physical anymore. Yeah. And she shouldn't have to be thinking so drastically and so hatefully, mm. even to this present day. It's time day. to let go. It's I time so. to let go. I appreciate what you're saying, Derek, and although I'm, I can't say whether you are correct or incorrect, yes. what has to be taken into consideration is that we are in an environment where people are expecting to experience things. Mm. Certain p people are edgy. Mm. People know there are ghosts here, and also people are very tired. They've been up a long time working very hard today. Yes. So it could simply be that he's very tired uh, and he's come over a bit faint and dizzy. Oh, with total respect, I do not feel that what Rick has just experienced was anything other than what we've actually been saying. With Rick now completely recovered, the team sat down to enjoy a hearty meal before a long, cold night of ghost hunting. Whether there are any ghosts here, is debatable but people will have experiences because of what they expect to occur when they come here you don't need to know that it has a spectral history in order to experience something here whether it be otherworldly or whether it be from within your own mind again is open to interpretation a lot of spirits can actually without coming into our atmosphere can send that thought transference through the different dimensions and form themselves as they were if they personally had an experience with that place that you were in at that time. Bev, in, in one of the, the rooms that we were sort of, mm. when we were looking round, you what, felt sick. I, wa I walked into um, a particular space in the room and three things happened at the same time. I felt like there was a weight on top of my head. I felt like there was um, something pushing really hard into my chest and I felt like I was going to throw up with that kind of instant, like, oh, God, I'm going to throw up. Um, get me a bucket now, kind of girl. And um, I moved out of the space and it stopped, but I could feel it still. It was like the kind of, the sort of imprint of it was still on me. I'm just sorry, as I'm sitting here now, something went past that window. I, I saw it earlier and I, I know exactly on the tape where it happened. I noted it on the time. What is it? I it's saw it about five It looked like two people, thought... a person walking out the back out, over yeah. there. Well, it was out that window and it caught my eye and I looked because I, I thought, there. oh, someone's walking in the shot who's walked mm. across the light. Mm. And but that was definitely. Like, like I like thought a, like somebody a, popped like outside. A, to me, it was like like a uh, um, like a line, like a flash, yeah. like like oh, that. Yeah. This was somebody this going was across that I window, mm -hmm. which crossed the light, and it was definite. I did see that. Determined as ever to find a logical solution, Jason immediately went out to investigate. <laughs> Well, if it had to be somebody walking across, they'd walk on... They wouldn't cross over there, would they? They'd walk on the path. To me, it looked like somebody had walked across here, like that. But looking at the shadow it's casting there, it would have to have been a lot higher, because the shadow I saw on that shutter inside the window, you see where my, my shadow is casting, it's just at the bottom of the shutter, it was much higher. So in order for... I mean, I'm six foot, so it would have to be someone who's like seven foot. But I didn't see it, and it's interesting as well that Ian also saw it, and then Yvette saw something as well. Because single, uncorroborated testimony, as it's known, if one person experienced something is pretty useless, but to have three people experience something very similar in the same short space of time makes it a lot more interesting. Sadly, we had caught nothing on tape. Should we, should we make yeah. our, our way over there? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Derek, now, you know this is the Minstrels Gallery. How does it feel? Well. It backed off slightly and it calmed down. But now, since we've come into the atmosphere, there's a slight urgency 
and the feelings of it, I, you know, I need to be pulled both psychically and spiritually to an area in the castle. And it's like it's got all my um, hackles, so to speak. Really? Wanting to, to go. And that's from this room? That's from this room. It's like an agency to come on then. Right, come and okay. see and speak. Now, I've heard that if there are such things as ghosts, they don't like the light, so shall we...? They prefer the darkness. Do they? They do, yeah. Shall we turn the lights off? Are Please. we all in agreement, everybody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, okay, let's turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. Right then, Derek. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll follow you. I've got okay. the candle and off we go. Right. Derek says he has a spirit guide called Sam who links him to the spirit world. Sam will guide Derek to different places around the castle. Now bear in mind that we have given Derek no information about the history or legends of Chillingham. Jason will be following us to verify any names or historical events that Derek mentions. Now, listen out very carefully for an unexplained hissing noise. What's that noise? <laughs> what noise? What noise? Oh, God, get out, get out, get out! Come here. We were all absolutely terrified, but we set off again. Oh, well, I'm really sorry. You don't have to, darling. I'm really sorry, I'm absolutely fucking you. If you want to go back and sit, do you want to come back I'll to your room with you? No, I'll take it back. Thanks, Martin. Mm -hmm. Why don't you want to sit? Oh. Why did you want to come back? I'm petrified, basically. What's that noise? Ah! Petrified of what? I'm so frightened, I can't even think straight, I can't see straight. Uh, I'll be better where I can put the light on. If you hear screaming, you know where it's coming from. God, I'm so embarrassed. Sorry, guys. Marcel was definitely giving up the ghost. The hissing incident had set all our nerves jangling. What noise? What noise? I, for one, was suffering some severe misgivings at this point, and we all had to steel ourselves in order to carry on. What else would the night hold in store? Derek seemed undaunted, and before long, he sensed another spirit presence. I'm very aware of this lady, this kindred lady spirit, and it's coming through me oh, quite strong. And I asked, please, can you just give me a little bit more information, but... Thank you. Thank you, Sam. See if you can get that clear. <gasps> That's better. It's okay, you'll be sorry. Forget it, just no, 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 no. Are you with me? Okay. Okay. That's better. Thank you. You tell me where you want me to come up with that. Can you pick up in the next Yes. Yes. Lady Mary. Lady Mary, Jason. Lady Mary. Well, this was the name that you came up with earlier on, and there is a Lady Mary. OK. Just ask her, please, if she can just kindly give me... Oh! Yeah. Uh, 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 OK. Don't use that, please, on me. Uh, uh, Lady Mary Grey. Is that right, Jason? Mm. Lady Mary Grey. She's part of me. Part of me. Part me. Part me. Lady Barkley. Lady Barkley. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. Thank you. Lady Mary Barkley. Barkley. She walks the passageways. Um, still not knowing. Still not knowing the true picture of why. <coughs> Who? Thank you. What's her name? There's a lady she's not too uh, happy with. She's not too impressed with. And although she calls this lady, she calls this lady who doesn't appear to come, um, and yet she calls and calls, and her frustrations are born out of... <coughs> Leonora. 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 She's not happy with Leonora. 
Leonora. No, Leonora just doesn't link with Lady Mary Barnes. Okay, she's not happy with something to do with that, okay? Okay, that would make perhaps. Something. She's not happy yeah. with something there. Um, Leonora wrote an account of the alleged ghosts that are supposed to haunt the castle in 1920. She didn't listen. She didn't listen enough. And Leonora, to Mary. Mm, well, Leonora wrote the story of, of Mary Barclay and Mary Barclay's ghost. Yeah. She didn't. Places. She didn't listen to her. She come to her. She right. come to her often, and give it an inspired thought for her to um, to put pen mm. to paper. She used to stand and look over her shoulder. Right. It seems as if she's drawing me, and it's like she's giving me a mental picture of a, a bedroom. Uh, she's been doing it all along. Shall we go to that, we that bedroom there? Is that where she's asking you to go? Please. She wants us to go. She really, really is so strong. Okay. Do you, want to, do you want me to tell you where the bedroom is, or just, is she leading you to it? Just, uh, I, you know, I'll get the pull this way. Okay, it's, it's that way. Yes. At this section. Yeah. Is a boy crying? Okay, come this way. Everything's fine, Andy. Everything's okay. Yeah. Oh, the okay. games. Was the weeping boy distracting us from our purpose to find Lady Mary Barclay's bedroom? Why was Derek being led in another direction? Upstairs he seemed disorientated and a little bewildered. Had we lost the trail? What's going through your mind, Derek? What's There's... I was drawn here and yet I want to go back out again. Why? I, at this moment, I don't know why. Um, I'm drawn here. Was this the bedroom that you were talking about earlier on when you were talking about Mary? Uh, why has my thoughts all gone to pink? It's surrounding me in pink and feeling. This came to me earlier. Um, I didn't understand it. Like as if I'm just surrounded with pink here. And yet, it's just like swirling round me. Well, we are actually next to... The bedroom beyond this door is known as the pink bedroom. This is pink. pink. No, there this isn't is... any, anything pink in it. No. It's called the pink bedroom. Good. This is the way we want. It's to draw to the pink. Oh, yes. It's a boy again. Can anyone hear him? No. No. You see, the colour blue is a healing very, very strong healing colour and also drawn around this boy as he comes into the atmosphere and his cries not of help but cries that have gone um, unheard because of cruelties that are associated with this boy. I get the feeling within, you know, and of incarceration. Um, I can't say that word any stronger of what I really, really mean or they want me to say incarceration. And if someone is jammed behind something and is thinking and wow. his feelings are so rude. Oh, let me know. No. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No, no, no. Come on, son. Come on. It's the grounds. The wall. The wall. I'm behind the wall. That man who's locked here with me. He was locked here with me. I didn't want him here. Sam, don't. Tell him to step back, please. Step back, please. The fact that you said incarceration is interesting because. The, the legend has it that he was immured in a wall. Um, some builders were excavating and they excavated a fireplace opposite to this one and they found some bones which were later discovered to be a boy child. 
and also another skeleton was found of a, a male adult with the child. But since then, people haven't necessarily reported seeing the boy, but they do see flashes of blue light, yeah. supposedly, which they people often mistake it for something electrical, but there isn't anything electrical in this wall. It's all been checked out. That's what the story, how the story goes, anyway, and, and that sort of fits in very well with what you have just experienced. Okay. What you you picked up on? Right? Yeah, I'm yeah. fine. I'm great. I'm great. Um, just um, came in, and Sam said, "Let it be. Just relax back, mm. and let him say." Do you want to say. see if we can go in that? I don't know if this yes. door is unlocked or not. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no. It's not. This is what. Yes, I'm drawn here very strongly. Okay. This is the, this is the wall yes. where the immured bones were discovered. Yes. And you feel this. Oh yes. You see, as I come here, as I come here, the feelings now. Peacefulness, and that was allowed. I feel, which took me unawares, really. But was allowed. Sam says, "Let go." And now that is what was um, what Jason had said. There is the rest period for the boy, mm. but that was given as what the experience prior to actually leaving this physical body of the screaming because there was screaming. I heard screeching and screaming coming up the stairs. Mm. And that was like, in, just for a short period of time, coming in. Well, people who've seen the ghost have, have said that it moans or wails at them. Uh -huh. as and that was a, a screeching word. Mm. And I feel, without a doubt, and I say it humbly, that um, not just as incarceration, but the picture and the feeling that I was receiving was that the torture of the boy, the torturing of the boy in many ways. Mm. In other words... Well, no one knows. I mean, the bones were there. That's fact. Right. We don't know who they were. They don't know who the child was or yes. why he was immured or why there was a skeleton of him or why an adult was immured with him. They don't know if he was dead be before it was put in or whether it was immured alive, whatever. They don't no. know. It's the, yes. the fact. I've All got... they know is that there were bones there. They were a child yes. and they were a male child. I got the ending of a life of poisoning as well. Mm. I've had two poisoning conditions here, yes, a lady on. and a boy. Yes, poisoning. Oh, it's abuse before. Okay. Okay. What do you want me to do, Sam? Take me where? Those two men. They give me insights earlier um, of two men. One man being very secretive and swearing to the other person who was taking his confidence and really threatening him with his life if he broke the confidence. One was above the other, one was um, in charge, one was um, his lord. Lord? Lord who? That's Lord Grey. Does that make sense? There are several Lord Greys. Yeah. Okay, Lord Grey. Um, they tell me to go to library. Library. Mm -hmm. Library area. Can we go to the there is a connection as well with when you were talking earlier about the Lady Mary Barclay. Yes. She connects with a Lord Grey. Okay. Where's the library area? It's back actually. We need to go back down while we've come. We can go okay. there. Yeah. They're prompting us to go there and they'll give us information. Okay. Come on, let's go. While the team moved to another part of the castle, our brave producer Carl decided to take a look at a storage room near the torture chamber. Keep your eye on the white plastic box on the table. Right, I tried to go in here earlier and got some noises and I went in here uh, um, just a minute ago and my camera wouldn't record. So I've just been recording outside and now, ever the intrepid traveller, I'm coming back in there again. I know, it's stupid. I really can't make out what all this stuff is. 
I can't actually walk any further into the room because there's so much stuff. Oh, f um, okay. There's not anything that I can certainly see. Um, I'm sure the noise came from here. Oh. What was that? What was that? It sounded like sort of glass breaking or, or being wrapped on. Um, uh, well, I, feel, I don't feel too bad in it. my attention out here to something it must be important it's got to be important please let it be important in the sense that for some reason there's a drawing from the um away from the wall from which we were there up there yes and he draws me to a bedroom and he shows me in my home i've got a four poster bed mm -hmm. and he takes me and he shows me purposely a four poster bed and he said twice to Sam, twice. Um, he didn't mean to frighten. He didn't mean to frighten the woman who was sleeping in the four-poster bed. And he was aware about his colouring around him. And he said, she saw me. She saw me, she saw me. I watched her ways. Well, Leonora... Tankerville, who wrote the account that you mentioned in the banqueting hall before when you came up with the name Leonora, uh -huh. her account of the blue boy or radiant boy hauntings go back to a time when a four poster bed existed in the pink bedroom. And that's where that's the, link with the people pink. slept who saw the blue boy, and that's where the earliest accounts of people citing that alleged apparition come from. Right. But there isn't a four poster bed there anymore. But <laughs> well, you're talking about it. He wanted to talk about that. Wow. Now, bless him, eh? Lesson. <laughs> Freaked by the incident in the torture chamber, Carl set off to rejoin us. On his way back through the castle, he had yet another chilling experience to report. Martin's sorry about little girl. It could have been a little girl laughing. Yes, in where? Okay. Just down uh, in that corridor. I, we, you know where we our rooms are? Yeah. And there's like some boxes, uh, like bread baskets or something, just just about there. Mm -hmm. And I ran back to him. Did you hear anything? And he said. Uh, a little girl, uh, he said, a little girl talking, and I said, well, I thought it was a little boy laughing. Mm. So you both had something. You both had something. Which you both perceived yeah. to be a child. It's definitely a child, but he said a girl, talk, a girl talking, and I How said, a boy girl laughing. Um, minutes. Well, there aren't any children in the castle tonight. No. Mm. It's a laugh. Nice. It, seemed like a, it seemed like a scream. Yeah. Where did you um, hear that? It was just outside, but it could have been an animal. But it definitely sounded quite high-pitched, and mm. it was as if... And Bev says she, she heard it as well. That's right. So whether it's an animal, I don't know. Okay. <coughs> there are animals on the estate, so we yeah. need to bear that in yeah. mind. Okay. Okay. Right, so okay. do you want to go up first, do you? As the night drew on, Derek was still being called by Sam, his spirit guide, to explore the old library. It seems to be getting me back into this section. It's very really? drafty here. Yes. Very drafty. And it's, very you know, drafty. it's just coming in. Very drafty here. Yeah. I'm getting a, getting a real blast. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Yes, it's a man. It's an officer. Oh. God, can you feel that? Can you feel it's it? It's an officer. Yes. God, it's freezing. Yes, there he is. <gasps> He's come very close to us here. Oh, it's so cold. It's okay. It's all right. Oof. And he wants to make his presence felt in his in his own way. Oh, can you feel? Yeah. No, it's it's not registering it's anything not. unusual. God, okay. It's freezing. But he's here. The temperature around him is eight or nine degrees, which is normal because that's the rest of that's the same. Jason, come and stand here. Yes. Just there. It was stronger a little bit earlier on when mm. we first came in, but it, I was drawn back down here. Mm. Maybe it's just uh, wanting to come into the atmosphere and be recognised. 
A torture chamber in total darkness was not a place any sane person would want to visit, especially after Carl's strange experience there. But that's where Derek insisted we went. Oh. It's not a very oppressive vortex here. Absolutely. That is um, the place where I heard there's noises. Yeah. Is it? And that box moved. negativity in the hall of the castle here. This here is not truly what it is. It's not. That's a fact. It's not really known where the torture chamber is. No, that's absolutely true. When developed, some of our photographs taken on Still's camera revealed mysterious floating objects invisible to the naked eye. Independent vision engineers have confirmed that they are not dust or refracted light. They could not give us an explanation as to what they are. With little time left before daybreak, I wanted Derek to have a look at the dungeon. Oh. Yeah, this, in actual fact, was like... I suppose the natural anguish, but you see, after a period of time, it was like as if the spirit was broken. Yeah. Until. Like, I'm defeated. Give up. Give, give up. Yeah. Take me. At yeah. That point. Oh, Sam, see if you can get it for me, please. Absolute individual total incarceration of a number. Mm. But I'm afraid I can't pinpoint. No. I can't. When I say I can't, I'm not getting the. It was very interesting. A lot of people experienced a lot of things. Whether they were down to paranormal agencies or mass hysteria is open to interpretation, but it was a very interesting evening from all angles. Well, it's a very haunted house, a very haunted castle. We have to say Derek got an awful lot of things spot on. He did. At first, I was taken back within the first hour or so by the, um, it seemed that the accumulation of activity the electromagnetic energy sensor device that we used last night failed actually to locate any unusual fluctuations, for want of a better word. And it's important to note that at other investigations where people are seeing things or experiencing things, it also has not necessarily logged on the EMF reading. So the fact that it didn't log doesn't mean nothing was happening. It just means that we didn't catch an EMF fluctuation. It was a very pleasurable um, mixture of uh, different experiences. So I'm just very thankful that what we were allowed to experience um, was something that will stay with us for quite a long time. Well, that was certainly a night to remember. Wouldn't you agree, everybody? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Well, we're all off for a well-earned sleep now, and uh, then we're off to our next location. We shall see you there. In the meantime, sleep tight. Are you right? Was all that? Yeah, OK. Oh, yeah. Step back, step back. Come on, you're affecting him too much. It's getting confused over in that corner. I swear I've just seen something out that window. Usually it's if there's something there. I turned around, I could have sworn someone was standing in front of me. I actually moved back because I thought something had mm. moved.